Okay, um, this is going to be part two of um, etching, the process of etching. Now, um, as I mentioned, I found these copper plates online and they're used for making lithographs, printing plates, and so on. And um, they, still, they used exactly the same process as, uh, as we use for etching, for uh, making models, except they're making plates that they're going to put ink on them and stamp them or run them on a press or something. And um, this is the plate, and it has a plastic coating on there. And I'm going to shut this light off for a second because the least exposure to it, the better. You want a little bit of a dark room. If you want to use a safe light, red, or a bug light, you could use that the low, lower toward the spectrum of light. You know, the, the white is higher than the lower ones are red. Lower weight light waves red or yellow bulb light, bulb light. But I never bought with it. I just got the regular lights on up here. And uh, I'm going to peel this off. Okay, and then just throw that on the side. And then I'm going to lay it down here, real simple. Line up my artwork. I have little marks on there to line it up. Line it up. You could tape it if you want. If you want to cut it, you can. I just don't want to waste the film. You can cut just the negative out, which I did the other one. Now, just an ordinary piece of glass that I got from the, basically from the dollar store. It's the same 50 thousandths glass that I use and lay that on top. Yeah, I set it up again and moved. Now, you can tape it if you want. That helps. Okay, I can line it up again, make sure it's right. Looks good. Now, when I made the negative, I want to mention the, negative, the artwork here. I made it so that it's going to have a line all the way around it. So the black there is going to make an etched line that's going to be depressed there. That's going to be basically like a layout. I'm going to follow that with the bandsaw or the hand miller, belt sander, you know, and belt sander around, or miller, whatever, it's going to make, give me a layout. So, now it moved on me again. Got to get in there just right. You really should tape it. But, uh, okay. And then if you really want to, you can put some weights on it. Alright, now you turn the light on. And you just come down. Make sure it's on there. Come down and you bring the light close. And just leave it there. That's it. Go do whatever you want to do. Just leave it on for about 15-20 minutes. Really give it a good exposure. And then we're going to show you how I develop it uh, with the uh, sodium hydroxide. Very simple. A little bit of that water. Use a little acid, clean acid brush and very gently brush. While that's cooking, one dimension, and this is a good time to do it. See, I'm doing a small etching, a few inches long. But if you did a piece as big as this piece of paper, Obviously, you'd have to cover this with a light of some sort, so you'd have to come up higher away from the light. And the further away you come from the artwork, from the from the negative, in, uh, the material that you're exposing, the brighter the light has to be. So you might want to, if you're going to make a big etching like this, like say diamond plate, big piece like that, you're going to have to come up with a 1500 water uh, halogen bulb that they sell like the construction lights and rig it up and then have... A, like a light box of some sort and and let it come down uh, uh, exposed directly to the light that way and uh, you could use it they have even the systems where they vacuum they suck this thing down with a vacuum to keep it nice and tight but you know that's real sophisticated stuff but this seemed to work okay for me so uh, yeah Yeah, it could have been, the plate could have been a little bit bigger, but uh, yeah, we're going to try it anyway. i get a couple good steps out of it. Maybe I'll make more than one, make another one. Uh, so, the next step is going to be to use the uh, developer sodium hydroxide to develop the plate. And then the final step would be to actually put it in the etchant. And I should mention that it's the same etchant that they use to make circuit boards. 
you can get the stuff at Radio Shack. Um, but the uh, copper plates are not that expensive. Four by six plates, about six bucks. Four inch by six inch. I bought like six or eight of them. And I also have zinc. Now the zinc, I don't like those as much. They're not as nice. I can't work with them as far as soldering them. Um, they just don't seem as durable as the, the copper. Uh, the one thing you should know is if you're going to do zinc and copper, you can't mix the solutions once you've used either or. If you, if you make an etching in copper, you can't use the same solution for zinc. Same way the other way around. It contaminates the, the fluid, so you've got to keep them separated. And another thing about the, the etchant or the ferric chloride is that it depletes in power, in potency. It depletes as you use it. So you have a couple of containers, plastic jars I happen to have. You pour the used stuff in there and you reuse it again. Now when you reuse it again, you pour a little bit of fresh stuff in with the, new, with the old stuff and that kind of replenishes it somewhat. And, um, and that way you keep it going. And then eventually it will take longer and longer and longer to make your etchings. And that means you know that the fluid is pretty well petered out. So uh, just get some more of it and uh, start all over again. And it, it's... Uh, uh, you could you could uh, do these etchings for next to nothing really in price. It's not that expensive to do. So uh, try it out and uh, and uh, see what you can come up with. I found a lot of different things to do with it. I I've made tri triple depth etchings, and what I mean by that is I etch so far down that I block some of it off and etch a little bit further down and block some more off, and I made different uh, levels of etchings that way. And the one thing you should know is the Sharpie pen, the, the, no, I don't know about any other brands, but Sharpie brand pen is resistant to the acid. So you can color it in any, any flaws in your, your artwork, and it won't eat through that. Uh, uh, you can sign your name, and it will come out. So uh, give it a try, and uh, uh, you can make some really neat-looking stuff for your locomotive.